Good afternoon, CUBE community, and welcome back to Databricks Data and AI Summit. We're here in our hometown of San Francisco, which I am fabulously delighted about. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my co-host and CUBE co-founder, John Furrier. John, what's up, man? Afternoon, we're grooving. I love it's grooving, it's rocking, the show's packed. The overflow from the keynote almost filled up the entire cafeteria room, which is massive. So, a ton of people here interested in what Databricks is doing again. Um, AI of, is yeah. driving everything. A ton of people here, a ton of people across business units too, yeah. which is yeah. a really exciting thing. We've got developers, we've got leadership, we've got executives. We've also got a fabulous guest joining us right now who's been on theCUBE maybe even more times than I have. Rick, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show today. <laughs> thank you, thank you for having me. What, what keeps bringing you back to punish yourself with John and I? <laughs> I love talking with you guys, you're great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rumor has it you were running the show at Informatica with three cameos not that long ago, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. I want to start off by noticing the first thing I noticed about you when you walked up to the desk yes. today. You're wearing a shirt that implies you may have received some accolades here. Can you explain your shirt? Yes, uh, we decided to be very subtle about this, but we <laughs> <laughs> really excited this year that Databricks has recognized Informatica as their 2024 Data Integration Partner of the Year. So it's a just huge validation of the, the growth we've seen together. Uh, you know, last year Databricks named us one of their top three fastest growing technologies, and, and now to receive this, just reflect with that momentum, a ton of innovation as well. That's, that's a lot of what we're, we're talking about here this week. What's the competition like? How many people did you have to beat out for that slot, do you think? Oh, there, there's a lot of players out here. You know, it's a lot of folks in integration these days. Uh, and have you walked by their booths with your chest out a little bit? Just uh, no comment, no comment on that. <laughs> I love it. Well, obviously a very deserved, very deserved accolade. So, so what are the types of solutions that you're providing partners that, that everyone's so in love with? Well, so one of the biggest ones that we rolled out for the Databricks uh, Data and AI Summit is we call our uh, Generative AI Blueprint. And we've been you know, rolling these out across uh, multiple ecosystems, but the idea is you know, how do you take all the capabilities of our intelligent data management cloud that provide you know, trusted data foundation and bring those into the world of generative AI to enable what we're calling enterprise grade Gen AI apps. Enterprise grade, we hear that a lot. What does that mean exactly? What, what sorts of check boxes does that have to tick to qualify? Well, there's a few uh, key requirements we look at. One is, I mean, everyone knows that one of the big potential downsides of Gen AI is that models hallucinate, right? They make things up. And in the enterprise, that does not work, right? You need consistency, you need accuracy, and so grounding becomes a critical capability. And, and we found that things like our master data for customer 360 supplier product really provide a good foundation for that. Uh, one of the others is contextualization, right? A public model doesn't know, you know, when you talk about your customer, is that a company or is it an individual? That's very specific to your domain. So bringing the governance, the intelligence about what your semantics are of your business, bring that into your prompts to enrich your prompts, enrich your summarization, uh, creates a lot. And then we also look at things like security, making sure that users only see the data they're allowed to see, that's critical as well. And, and ultimately, you're creating the infrastructure, the scaffolding, how do you do that in a very scalable way, a no-code way? And the great thing is our platform is, is really well positioned to deliver on all those elements. So one of the things this shows highlighting is again, the conversations we've been having on theCUBE and we had an Informatica world was, AI really has to nail the governance up front. That has really been the big thing, all the traction has been, and I mean, governance used to be I mean, talked about, but certainly you guys, that's your business. Yep. But it's now mainstream around that because of the horizontal scale of data. And the, now that developers are involved, so it's not just set the data up for data engineering, it's like, it's impacting the app web cycle and development cycle. Yep. Why, why is that ha happening and what are some of the things you're seeing around where people are in that progress of their journey in rethinking or just deploying more governance? Yeah, well I think you know, a lot of the same underlying factors that drove the need for governance in the analytics world uh, kind of just been amplified, right, in the Gen AI world. And I think in a lot of ways, Gen AI experiences have potential to be kind of magical experiences, right? And the problem with magic is you're, you're kind of wondering, well, what's going on behind the scenes here? How do, how do I know? Are not, you or <laughs> are you just kind of loving it? Depends <laughs> on the context. Of it, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but enterprises recognize that if they lose trust in these applications very quickly, it, it's, it's not just visible to the IT folks anymore, it's visible to all these business users, it impacts them. So the, the downside of not having governance is much, much, much bigger, right? It's a much bigger risk for companies to not have that grounding, that accuracy, that transparency in their generative AI applications. I mean, if you don't have governance, it's not going to work. Yes. It's, it's kind of a non-starter at this point. Absolutely. Especially with the scale and everything else. Let's talk about no-code and low-code and the data pipeline support of Databricks and, uh, and user data integration and transformation. A absolutely. <laughs> okay. what, what can you tell me about it? How, how do you help that? 
Well, yeah, so Informatica has very much been focused always on kind of the no-code user, you know, configuration-based, visual drag-and-drop experiences. Uh, you know, one of, our other, one of our big announcements this week is we call it our native SQL ELT. A lot of, kind yeah. of a long acronym there, but, uh, but basically the idea being you know, using visual definition of your data pipelines that we push down and run natively inside of Databricks. So we use the compute power of Databricks, uh, the extensibility with their, they have a lot of specialized functions these days uh, that really lets customers take advantage of the full platform, but again, take the scalability, maintainability of the no-code experience. It sounds like a pretty lovely turnkey solution. Everything yeah. I'm hearing in what you're saying is that easy button yeah. that everybody's looking for. What do you, are there any, you're making it all sound like this is going to be smooth and dandy. Are there any concerns or roadblocks as you look out in the future of risks for customers or things people should be aware of that you could advise them to avoid? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think one of the big things is just like any initiative with data and analytics or AI, you really have to understand where you're headed. What are you trying to achieve? What are the outcomes you're going to So, So as much as this is a technology problem, it always comes back, there is this people process side of it as well. And setting expectations correctly with your consumers is critical. Right, if the expectations are way out of whack. That's a really yeah. good point. So let's talk about that just for a second, because I feel like customer expectations, and correct me if I'm wrong, they've got to be all over the place right now. Yeah. So how are you working, how do you work with your customers to get them to realize what's actually going to be a tangible outcome today versus what's going to be a tangible outcome, say, in the future? Yeah, I think a lot of it is, and we have a great partner community and ecosystem as well. A lot of the system integrators and GSIs, uh, they are critical to that, right? Because they can come in yeah. and help the organization with, how are you going to adopt this? How, what's the change management around it? Um, you know, and, and that's but a lot of the conversation is, hey, before we go and invest in this big initiative, let's understand, are we going to get a 50% improvement, a 10% improvement, and then how are we going to measure and track that on an ongoing basis, right? How do we right. build the practice around it? Just like we've done around analytics and reporting, those quality controls, how do you do that in the AI world? Right? Talk about the relationship with Databricks. Obviously you guys are on the ecosystem partner of the year for data integration. Yep. Um, BFFs. You start yep. to see the clients, and, and Ali said it on stage today, the data estate's been fragmented. Does that problem go away? There's always going to be multiple vendors in there. You guys coexist a lot with Databricks and other platforms. What is the customer perspective on this? Can you share yep. uh, one your relationship with Databricks and how are the customers viewing it? Well, I think Informatica occupies a very unique position, right? You know, I think as you guys know, we're, we're the only platform I'm aware of that's on four clouds right out there. And we're recognizing there's a lot of innovation. Customers will want to try out different things. But the one continuous thing is they want consistency in their data management, in their governance, their integration, no matter where is they are. Critical, right? yeah. And that, that's huge for us. So a lot of customers are coming and saying, look, we, we want to move away from point solutions. We, we actually want something holistic. We want something that's scalable long term. And that's worked really well for us. That, that, that cohesion, that single dashboard, that single toolkit, that UI that's really thoughtful. Yeah. How often are you communicating with customers, with developers, with your community to keep that feedback loop relevant? What's that like for you? I mean, it's continual, right? It, it's a really important part of, and, and especially we do on the ecosystem side, my part of the business, is you know, having deep product alignment with Databricks on an ongoing basis. That's a big part of our approach. Because you know, when we have new innovations coming to market, like we just announced the full verification of support for Unity Cal across our entire platform. Good which timing. Is, yeah, it's, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but that's that's because we're coordinated, we're aligned with them, we understand what's coming next and what's going to be most important for customers, right? So, and, and then here, customer conversations are absolutely critical. I love being here and getting to talk to customers, share the new announcements, get their feedback. It's just a, it's a great environment for that. Are there any customer use cases that get you excited personally, as much as I'm sure they get you excited as a business, but just as a human? Um, you know, I, I love cases where uh, you are transforming how people are, are working day to day. I love use cases where it's take, and actually I think one of the potentials of Gen AI is that for the first time we really can start to see not just data being democratized, but data management being democratized. And that's a lot of what we're doing with our Clare GPT and Clare Copilot. Uh, I'm really excited for those applications. You think about a supply chain analyst who's trying to do new sourcing, and they are able to look at public data, figure out, okay, well, what are the right products that are exciting and getting traction, but which suppliers do I actually work with already and have relationships because they have their MDM data, right, together. I think that's What's next? Stuff. What's next in this evolution for Databricks, you think? You're starting to see the openness coming. What do you see them doing next? I definitely, yeah, openness is a huge theme, right? When we look at you know, the open sourcing announcement of Unity Catalog, uh, and you look at what's going on with Tabular and Iceberg and Iceberg adoption. Um, so I think we're going to actually see some convergence of standardization, which is good, which is great for everybody, uh, in terms of you know, skill set development, scaling this, what everyone's trying to achieve. Uh, so that is definitely one of, the, one of the big themes, and I think it's going to be good for everybody. The, um, 
The, I love the serverless. Yes. Yeah. That's going to remind me of a, taking some friction out of the managing all these clusters. Um, I, I, that jumped out at me, Savannah, and, and the openness yeah, too. Yeah, it was I a like, big. It was a big announcement. It was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think that was probably the hottest takeaway from the morning when yeah. I was watching the Twitter sphere in my car on the way home, or on, in the car that was driving me here, for the record. I wasn't watching <laughs> this while I was operating the motor vehicle. Hopefully soon I won't have to operate a motor vehicle again. But I did, I, I, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I actually wasn't expecting a few of the announcements that came out today that were pretty exciting. Did you know everything that was coming? Uh, we, we have a little view into that, you know, and... Uh... Oh, that must be nice. All right, well, on that note, what's coming next then? What can we expect? What Tomorrow. can you tell us next? <laughs> <clears throat> what, what can you tell us next? What's the future for Informatica first? We'll go that direction so you yeah. don't have to be too naughty. Okay, fair, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so the, the big thing for us is, uh, so we, we went GA with our Claire GPT and Claire Copilot. So the, the leveraging of Gen AI inside our platform is a huge area of focus for us. And customers came out of Informatica World so excited about that. We're demoing it here to the booth, showing folks what yeah. we can do with it. Um, so I think that's huge. You know, where I'm focused as well is, again, bringing those enterprise grade Gen AI apps as well. Yeah. And, and bringing those experiences and also starting to bring those experiences to the edge, so to speak. Meaning at the point of need, the point of consumption, uh, you know, you look at, I think, uh, some of the other ecosystem players, where they're embedding co-pilots and things like that. Uh, there's some really unique opportunities that are going to be presented uh, as customers start to, to get to the kind of true enterprise adoption. Okay, I got a question for you, because I was going back and forth with Sean and Dave a little bit yesterday about what I think is going to be the edge device that onboards the most people to adopting Gen AI on a more daily basis. Yeah. Not, uh, and uh, so I'm curious, what is your prediction for what's going to be that edge device? Um, so I'm not going to name a specific technology necessarily, but I would say there you are a lot, I would say it. collaborative tools for me are, are definitely one of the hotspots, right? Because you have communities of interest that have common needs that are sitting together, they're collaborating already in these spaces, but now with Gen AI apps and Copilots, they can actually translate that to action, right? And actually build yeah. the application and that experience. So that's a big one. I do think things like Office, right? Sitting on the, on the desktop is going to be a big one. I mean, I use it already day to day, right? And, and uh, so I think those, those are the two big categories for me. And then probably further down the line would be embedded in specific applications, right? And those, and those line of business applications and having the experience there as well. All right, that was nice and vague, but also a little well, you gave us a little bit of a picture there. I see what you're doing. All right. All right, I'm going to ask you one of my favorite questions to ask, because obviously we have you on the show constantly. Yeah. So I'll actually give it a time frame. Okay. I'll, I'll, right. I'll let right. it extend out. What do you hope to be able to say when we have you on the show at Databricks Summit next year that you can't say yet today? I would love to be able to just spend the whole time talking about customer apps that are delivering enterprise value, right, with Gen AI. We're in the early days, but I just want to come out here and talk about we did this, we did this, here's amazing examples where customers are just, yeah, Gen AI is really, the promise has, has come to fruition, right? I, I hear that so much. So you're going to bring a customer up here sure, next absolutely. time when we can tell absolutely. the story together? Yep. I think that would be absolutely it. fantastic. All right, well this has been thrilling. John, thank you for thank your insights as always. Appreciate and thank you for coming to hang out with us, yeah. Rick. I, I, clearly you are a CUBE celebrity <laughs> now for over a decade it sounds like, yeah. and three times that Informatica, so I look forward to sharing the stage with you next time. And thank all of you for tuning in, wherever you might be enjoying this thrilling coverage of Databricks Data and AI Summit here in San Francisco, California. My name's Savannah Peterson, you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.